we spend a lot of time wondering, what is that person feeling? What is that person thinking? Did I say something to upset this person? If you look at the parts of the brain that allow us to do this process, those regions that we call social cognitive regions, they're in parts of the human brain that have expanded recently in our evolution. And so we wanted to understand what is it about these regions that makes them special and able to do this. Ready the next one? No. The amygdala is part of the lizard brain, is often said. So even lizards have an amygdala. And so here, even the most advanced parts of the brain that are expanded in humans are still talking to these ancient structures. One of the most exciting things is that um, we're now able to confirm that with kind of these high resolution imaging studies that we're actually able to identify network regions that we kind of weren't able to see before in other types of fMRI studies. The amygdala is actually tucked away here in the medial temporal lobe. And so that's a really hard part to reach. So, you know, here you would have someone's face, and so it's just behind the eyes and really hard to, to reach down there. You can get at it through a deep brain stimulation, but that's a, ultimately a surgical procedure. Instead, you can stimulate parts of the brain, for instance, with a TMS or a transcranial magnetic stimulation into these more easy to reach regions. And so because we know that the social cognitive network, which sits in multiple parts of the cortical surface here, is connected to the amygdala, if we can stimulate those cortical parts, we're potentially modulating the amygdala. You may be able to modulate those behaviors as well.